Today we're reviewing the Spot Rocker. If you haven't already checked out my first look build, go look at that first to see what this bike's all about. Let's take it on the trails in 29er mode with belt drive. These are super narrow stands crest rims with 2.25 tires. I've had a few rides on it. I'm excited to share with you what I think of it in this mode. This bike is crazy light and you feel it when you ride it. It is so light. And this bike does not ride like its geo chart suggests. Very XC and quick. It wants to just carve all the little corners. I mean, this bike comes in sub 23 pounds. Man, still loves to pop and play though. But it doesn't have the quite the planted feel of a heavy bike. It's way more playful than it should be for its geo numbers, just like its cousin, the Spot Ride 115. This thing should be called the Spot Rocket. It is one of the fastest bikes I've ever ridden. It is so zippy and it lends itself so well to single speed. This is what people imagine when they imagine a single speed is a bike that handles like this, a bike that accelerates like this. Man, it is so light. And the ride feel, holy cow. By far the best carbon frame I've ever ridden. Does not feel noodly anywhere, but it is so comfortable. You can charge stuff way faster than you should on this thing. Here's a chunky slow climb. So back to that ride feel. Hang on, let me get up this. That ride feel, it's nice and stiff in the bottom bracket area. You can see it in the carbon frame. It's just really reinforced in the bottom bracket. So it's super stiff when you're pedaling and it transfers that power really well. Oh, it's sketchy on these tires. I'm glad these are new tires. They have way more grip than a used set of Ralphs. Because of the strong, stiff bottom bracket, it accelerates super quick. <laughs> Manualing between rollers. This bike wants to play. So yeah, under power, it's super stiff. Great power transfer, like a carbon bike should be. But those seat stays, and I think even the top tube a little, give it such a soft ride feel on the down. It feels so good. You can come in way faster than these tires can handle. This bike makes you wanna race everywhere and just fly as fast as possible. But man, that trail chatter. <laughs> oh, so fun on this stuff. If you wanna make blue and green trails fun again, check this out, holy cow. But yeah, trail chatter. Still a hardtail, but man, it's softer than most steel frames at like half the weight and it accelerates way better than a steel frame. I had a feeling Spot could crack the code if anyone could. They have experience designing. Yeah. This manual's way better than it should. Man, this bike is perfect for this terrain. But Spot has a lot of experience using carbon as a flexi leaf spring. Their full suspension designs featured the Living Link, which was a carbon leaf spring, which was designed to take something like two or three million cycles without breaking. And I think this is where the future of carbon hardtails is headed. When you can tune that ride feel and the compliance and the stiffness and make it stiff where you want, and flexy where you want. I can't believe how soft that rear end is. It doesn't feel like steel. It feels like carbon, but with some give in it. 
really comfortable. I haven't felt any other hardtail even close to this. Really incredible what they've done here. Oh man, easy to lift the front wheel. This bike almost feels too light, almost. Holy cow, this is special. So what makes this bike special? I'm not sure, but I've got my theory. First of all, super low seat tube. I'm so grateful they did that. Look at how low profile that is. That's super thin, that's like 12 mil thick. That combined with the thin shape of the seat stays, I think that's really contributing to that nice soft ride quality. But up here, it is so massive and beefy. Nice, stiff, big chain stays. And I think we're getting all the flex up here. Pretty awesome. And this thing's just like a Ferrari, it just looks beautiful. Here in the Southwest, I think this bike is best at home on blue and green trails. I've taken it on black trails and while it does fine, it's too light for those and it kind of wants to dance around, at least in this mode. I'm excited to try it with plus tires. I don't quite have the confidence because it doesn't feel quite as planted because it just kind of wants to skip across the top of everything. It's surprising what this bike can do. It feels XC-ish and it's geo when you get on it and you start riding and it's zippy and quick to turn. It's not twitchy and it's somewhere between like a Sur 9 and something more modern with like a 65, 66 degree head angle. It doesn't feel old school, but it doesn't feel totally new school. This is not an aggressive hardtail. I wouldn't feel comfortable taking this on Highline in the double black diamonds here in Sedona. It's just not the right bike for that. But for long days or a quick one to two to three hour single speed sprint, I haven't ridden a better single speed bike yet. And this thing suits the stereotypical single speed to a T. And it's not just a planted plow sled. Like it's totally different from that Hanzo ESD. Running that single speed was just for laziness and fun. This is just super peppy and it fits this feel of this bike really well. I'm anxious to try this with gears, but I think I'm gonna prefer it as a single speed. It just suits the attitude of this bike so well. I like the short offset fork. It doesn't feel twitchy like a lot of 67 degree head angle bikes. I don't know, it's just a really balanced bike and the chain stays feel way shorter than the numbers suggest. This thing loves to manual and it will just hold manual so well. And it makes no sense to me because the chain stay feels 20 mil shorter than it is. And this medium fits me well. If you're 5'10", I definitely bump up to a large, but uh, I'm 5'6", the medium fits me well. So right now I'm tuning the belt drive I've loosened these two bolts and changing this. You can hear it's like tuning a guitar. So I'm gonna get this tension just right using their app. This dropout is extremely easy to adjust. The other one's confusing. It's reverse threaded and the Allen doesn't quite fit in there. I think my bolt's slightly bent. That's a bit of a bummer. It's, it's finicky to get that one adjusted. I think they could have done a little better on that. Recommended frequency for mountain bike is 60 to 75 hertz. 68, that's perfect. Now I just tighten these down to 10 Newton meters. I think it's important to pay attention to how easy it is to adjust the dropouts on single speed bikes. These are fantastic, except for that weird bolt on that side. So we're running a 4628. That's essentially a 32 by 19.4. So that's slightly harder than I ride, but pretty dang close. It works great here for Sedona. I wish these were smaller. This is a little bit big. And here in Sedona, I know we're not doing trial stuff on a single speed, but it can come pretty close to hitting rocks because that's so big. I wonder if this just can't make a tighter radius on something like a 20 tooth, and that's why they run everything bigger. Oh yeah. I've upgraded the grips to my favorite Ergon GD1s. Love these grips. All right, let's find a bonus line. This bike does feel a little bit delicate just because I'm used to enduro bikes and this weight is so low on it. And it doesn't feel fragile per se, but I don't know, it does feel like you should take it easy. So it's surprisingly composed on really steep stuff like that. That's steeper than a 45. It does well. You're not gonna blast through it like an enduro bike and just send it. 
but it can be finesse down tricky stuff. But the bike does feel light and nimble, not solid and planted, if that makes sense. I don't want to go hucking, you know, four foot hucks to flat on this thing. Especially not with the Stepcast 34. And I think the Stepcast 34 is the right port for this bike too. It's just such a joy to ride. And it's so zippy. And I love that bell drive for nerdiness alone. It kind of has a soft engagement feel with that bike. It's a little bit softer than a chain. And I think the four star build is the one to get. You lose the Kashima, who cares? You still get that great bike yoke revive dropper. You get a little bit uh, lower end of wheels. But same GL, same frame. I do have to rein it in just a little. I can't just charge and send it like a bigger bike. But sometimes that's fun. Riding on the ragged edge all the time is surprisingly fun. Instead of being on a super aggressive bike that you're riding at 50% capability. And that's why this bike is so fun. I feel like it needs some different tires for Sedona. I like the dissector up front and an icon in the back for a fast rolling high grip combo. Whew. What a workout. My wife took this bike out and it didn't beat her up and she only weighs 110 pounds. So finally a lightweight bike that doesn't beat up lightweight riders. In the car world, they say it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. And I feel like that's the case with this. And it just goes to show the importance of picking the right bike for where you live. Everyone wants me to crown my favorite hardtail, the best hardtail for everyone. There is no best hardtail for everyone. The best hardtail for this trail is not the best hardtail for the next trail. And that's why I offer private bike consulting for people looking for their next bike. When I get a comment on a video that says, this or the Nuke Proof Scout, there's no way I can make a recommendation on that. Depends on where you live and what you're looking for. And I do all that through Patreon. So if you need bike advice, head on over to patreon.com slash hardtail party. Sign up for the bike consultation service. Enough talk, let's go. Yeah. Woo! This thing wants to be ridden on the edge. What a special bike. So good. It's just so neutral and comfortable. think it just does what I'm thinking man this is a rocket it's ridiculous how fast this is just goes to show that bikes ride so different from their geo charts I did not expect this thing to want to jump in manual at all yeah. what a blast Oh, I'm riding it on the ragged edge, it's so fun. It almost feels a little bit too lightweight to really charge. Especially the wheels in the front end. Oh, what a bike spot. This bike is probably the most exciting bike I've ridden all year, and that's saying a lot. It's just got this zippiness excitement about it. It feels a little bit in between an old school bike and a new school bike. It doesn't feel like a slack aggressive bike where you just dump the bike, but you don't have to steer with the bars either. It's pretty well balanced. I feel like with a wider rim and a meatier tire, it would be a 10 out of 10 cornering. I don't quite trust those Schwalbies, which leads to the exciting lively ride. If, if you're bored with your bike, run smaller knobbies and get a little bit driftier, and man, it makes everything even more exciting. Playfulness is really where this thing surprised me. 
It, it's not playful like a BMX bike, but man, it's way more playful than it should be. It jumps really well. It pops off little roots really well. It feels composed in the air and it manuals so freaking well. One of the best manualing bikes I've ever ridden, which is so weird. I need to look at the geo numbers closer and figure out why. And that frame compliance is second to none. I've never ridden anything like that. The back end just absorbs chatter so well. When I first took this bike out, it felt a little bit nervous on its first ride because I wasn't used to how light it was and how to manage that and get the most traction out of it. Now that I'm used to it, that nervousness has gone away and I'm used to the lightweight and I don't feel like it's too skittish until you push it harder than you should in the black diamond stuff. And it'll get down that black diamond stuff, but you're gonna have to take it slower. You're not gonna be riding on the ragged edge. You're gonna be taking it safe and going about half speed down it. So if you find yourself with small black diamond sections, you'll be okay, you'll be able to push through it. Whole enchilada on this thing, even with that comfortable frame would just be tiring all day long. But something like Navajo Rocks in Moab, man, this would be the perfect bike for that. So that should help you decide if this is for you or not. If you're seeking those really steep lines to just charge them as hard as possible and smash a catch berm as hard as you can on the bottom, this isn't the right bike for you. But if you like flowy blues and greens and you wanna be on the ragged edge and just zip through flat rolly stuff like you've never zipped through before, holy cow, this bike is incredible. I've never ridden anything like it. All right, now it's time to put 27.5 plus wheels on it to see how that changes the ride. Will it make it more of a plowy bike? Will it make it even more comfortable? Or will it make it feel heavy and dull and dead feeling? Let's find out. All right, now we've got the Spot Rocker in plus mode. These are the Stans Baron wheels with the Recon 2.8 plus front and rear. In belt drive mode, you can buy it in this configuration, in 29er configuration with the belt, 29er with gears, and plus with gears. We are on ground control, a perfect test for this bike it's a black diamond it's got some spicy sections let's see how it does with the big tires this is my favorite single speed climb in Sedona it's a challenge <laughs> this thing's fun with plus tires man it's rowdy so much traction <laughs> This bike is so fun. Way more fun than its geo chart would suggest. I don't know if it's the 60 mil stem or what, but I've never ridden a 67 degree heading a bike that feels like this. So confident and it still feels light. It's significantly heavier in the wheels than the 29er version. That's just the nature of plus tires. But man, still a super zippy bike. <laughs> it has so much more confidence with these big tires. I'm forgetting I'm on this bike and I'm charging it like I'm on one of the big slack 64 head angle bikes. It's wild. Threads that needle with ease. It's lost a little bit of its zippiness that it had in the 29ers, but it also lost a little bit of its sketchiness. It's a lot more planted now. I don't have to be so careful. I can just charge and do whatever I want. I can't believe it. This is a 120 carbon bike with a 67 degree head angle. Holy cow, I can't believe we're here already. This thing flew up this hill. I can't believe that. What a charger. That's the fastest I've ever gone up there. See how it does on the loose steppy downs. Oh. So much traction on that front. I love plus time. Wow. So much grip with these tires. It's like a different bike. It's still got that zippy, soft, smooth rear end feel. Man. Traction galore with these tires. Ah. 
sure, why not? Take the bonus line. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That was more composed than the Nimble 9 through there, and this is a degree steeper. There's no reason this bike should be able to charge this hard. I feel like it's taking a nice knife to a gunfight, but the gun guy doesn't know what you brought. And halfway through the battle, you're like, holy cow, I'm destroying this guy. And he has a gun. Dang, this thing's fast. What voodoo have you done, Spot? This is ridiculous. What an exciting ride. Man, that was awesome. Holy cow. This is the most exciting bike I have ever ridden, period. That doesn't mean it's the perfect bike for you. Man, this thing's special. It makes no sense. Normally I like a 15 mil longer reach, two or three degree slacker head angle, another 10 mil of travel. I don't normally love carbon bikes. They normally beat me up. This thing is so special. This thing's like that girl in the movies, in the superheroes, that's wearing glasses and, you know, they pick some really attractive actress and just dress her like a nerd with glasses so that no one suspects she's really a model. And then as the story develops, she loses the glasses and gains her confidence and looks like a model. That's this bike. Looks like a nerd at first. You look at it on paper, you're like, nah, 2XE. Then you throw a leg over it and you're like, eh, that's kind of fun. Then by your fourth or fifth ride, you are blown away by how incredible this bike is. It is so good. In 29er mode, this bike has a ton of character, a ton of personality, a ton of that special sauce, what I call it. Such a cheesy term, but I can't think of anything better. Now in plus mode, it's lost a little bit of that character that made 29 or so good. It's not quite as zippy and quick. It's still zippier than any other bike, but it lost a little bit of that excited, just makes you want to sprint everywhere. Just a little, maybe 10% of it, we lost it. And that's because we got heavier wheels and smaller wheels. But what it lost there, it gained in character in other areas. In some ways this feels like the exact same bike and in some ways it feels like a totally different bike. This thing just wants you to point it at the bonus lines and charge now with plus tires. I don't think Spot intended this bike to be this good at riding rowdy stuff. I think people are gonna ride this way beyond its intended use. I know I would so fun. In fact, it's got me contemplating riding it on some of our double black diamonds just to see if I can. I don't feel like it needs more travel. Seat angle feels great. This bike should not manual as well as it does. It shouldn't corner as well as it does. I'm not surprised it's a great climber. I am surprised it's such an amazing descender. It just zips along and then you look down at your map and you're like, holy cow, we're here already? This wouldn't be my first choice for an enduro bike, obviously. It's not an aggressive, super big bike. I wouldn't huck it off big hucks or jumps. But man, if I'm on blues or greens, I'm hoping this is the bike on my bike rack. It's so fun. This thing is such a well-kept secret. Man, if I were Spot, I'd have a fleet of 20 of these at every demo event. And just tell everyone, just try it. Tell me what you think. And I'd put it in the plus tires. And I think people would come back with the biggest grin on their face and say, I was looking at a 140, 150 Enduro full suspension. Never mind. That was way more fun. I wish everyone could ride one of these. They are so special. It takes a few rides to get used to though. You won't feel it immediately. You'll feel the zippiness, 
and the attitude, but it'll be harder to control at first. And then it just clicks. What a special bike. This is the bike that makes no sense on paper, but then you ride it and fall in love with it. And you get it anyway, and you're so glad you did. This is the most special bike I've ridden yet on the channel. It's not for everyone. This bike has more character and more of that special sauce that I call it than any bike I've ridden. It's the underdog going up against Mike Tyson. And the whole time you're just like, holy cow, he's keeping up. How is this happening? This bike just makes you happy. I'm gonna review it in geared mode too, but I'm a little sad. I don't want to take it out of belt drive single speed mode. It's so fun. Oh, for 90% of the trails out there, what a special bike. It doesn't feel as delicate with the plus tires as it did in 29er mode. It feels way more planted. I think the wheels were almost too light in 29er mode, and this just feels glued. It'll still play. It'll still, you know, it'll still wheelie. <laughs> it'll still jump. It'll still manual and play around. But it just has that extra traction. I don't feel like I'm going to slide out anywhere on this thing. And after every ride, I put this bike away. And then I start thinking, well, maybe it's not that great. Maybe I'm just gushing and I don't know. And then I get back on it and instantly that smile comes back and I'm like, nope. It's just as great as I remember. This is by far the best feeling carbon bike I've ridden. I'm one of the top three best feeling bikes ever. As far as compliance and suppleness goes. I just got back from my 60 mile single speed ride challenge on the Black Canyon Trail. And here's how I changed it. I put my own wheels and tires on it. These are Nuke Proof Horizon V2 wheels, really fast engagement. But it's a 30i rim with a 2.3 specialized ground control in the back and a 2.3 specialized eliminator up front. And with this setup, I feel like it's the best of both worlds between the 29 and 27.5 plus. I get that stable planted feel with the grippier tires and it doesn't feel sketchy, but it still feels light and zippy and it wants to stay up at speed. So if I were to get one of these, this is totally how I would spec it out. I like the plus, it's fun, but it loses some of that excited, uh, quick acceleration. And I love the light wheels that it comes with, but they're a little too light, a little too narrow. Uh, the tread's too minimal to really trust, at least where I live. If you have loam everywhere and not a whole lot of rocks, you might like the, the really light setup that it comes with. If I had an unlimited budget to build one of these up, I would run the Stan's Arch Carbon Rims on these with two threes front and back. I think it would be just perfect. And I love Stan's rims because they don't seem to pinch flat as much the rim profile is really nice but i do want something wider than the crests that came on this bike so yeah i think that's the perfect setup two threes front and rear and a 29. the frame's still compliant enough that it's not going to beat you up and you don't need the big plus tires and uh, actually these weighed in at the same weight as the plus wheel set now i'm getting ready to put some gears on it and test it as a normal mountain bike not a single speed mountain bike but i do want to talk about the belt drive first i love the idea of a belt drive I don't think it's any better than a chain though. And it might be worse in some cases. In this case, we've got a 46 chain ring. That is massive. It's so much bigger than a standard 32 that you notice it. And I've actually hit it on a couple rocks on my rides here in Sedona. And belts don't like to be sandwiched between rocks and the chain ring. Chains don't either, but I feel like chains can handle more abuse. I've actually broken one belt on this test period. I sent it to Spot, they checked it out. It was a handling issue. And I'm not sure what that means and how I mishandled it, but um, I'm, I lost a little bit of confidence in the system. And it isn't totally silent and it does need a little bit of lube in there, which isn't awful. It's not as greasy as a chain and the lube just stays on the inside. But it's not, a lot of us think, oh, belt's perfect, you never have to lube it, it's gonna be clean forever, um, zero issues. 
When I broke the belt on my ride, I had to walk home because you can't fix a belt on the trail. Thankfully, Spot talked to me and taught me more about the belt and it was user error, it was my fault. So even though these are strong and they can handle a lot of tension, I do feel like they're a little bit more delicate. And these belts aren't cheap. They're over 90 bucks to replace. I think it's cool and I love that people experiment with different things, but I don't feel like I would lose anything if this bike were chain driven instead of a belt. And in fact, I think I'd gain something. I'd gain a little more reliability. I'd gain the ability to fix it on the trail. And I would definitely gain more chain clearance with a smaller chain ring up front. And that's actually a pretty big deal for me. One thing that makes belt drives unique is the frame has to have a split in it so you can get the belt out. There's no master link to get it through. So here's how Spot solves that. The dropout actually comes apart there and flexes. I really like the design rather than having it interrupt up here or something. That's a great place for it to come together and be stiff. But you can see that the carbon is flexy as well. So. That's why it's got such a great ride quality. One issue I've been having with the non drive side sliding dropout is the actual bolt doesn't line up with the hole. So I try to get a, a wrench in there and it won't go in there. It's, it's hitting. And so what I have to do with the wheel on is push against this bolt and get a ball end in at an angle to be able to reach it on that. So the machining tolerances were just a little bit off there. That's one thing I would love to see corrected in the future. I have had to wheel on there trying to tension the bolt and stuff. I'm not actually able to get a wrench in there at all. It's also interesting to note this threads, when you thread it backwards, it gets tighter. And on this side, you tighten it. They're opposite each other, which is fine. You just have to know that it does that. Here's the drive side sliding mechanism. Really simple. And we've got a stopper in there. And when we tighten the screw, it pushes it back. Pretty cool. All right, now I've got the spot rocker set up in 29 mode with gears. X01 Eagle, fantastic drivetrain. I've kept my Nuke Proof Horizon wheel on the front because I like that wider, traction-y, grippier 2.3 specialized eliminator I've got up there. Really like that tire. But in the back, I've got the stock Schwalbe Racing Ralph. It's not what I would run full-time here, but I did want to test it as close to stock as possible but I couldn't do the stock Schwalbe in the front. That was just too narrow. And I didn't want to put a 2.3 on that. So I just put my whole wheel on. One thing I got to say, swapping this over to geared, Spot has my favorite cable routing so far. You just push the cable in there, keep pushing until it pops out. No drama, no fuss, no rattling. Super well done. All right, let's take it on the trails and finish up this review. So I'm gonna come out and say it. This is the bike to beat for me for XC and trail for just all around riding where a hardtail really excels as you guys know in my reviews I try to pick trails that really highlight and showcase the bike and today we're doing kind of some XC flowy trails trail stuff not real like enduro terrain because this isn't an enduro bike so if I own this bike, I'd probably ride it 50% of the time that I ride. It'd be the quick grab and go bike when I'm doing a medium trail. I'd end up going to bigger rotors for how I ride because I'd rather have a little extra weight with better stopping power. I'd have wider wheels and tires with those two threes front and rear. I'd probably run it single speed, but I'd have the geared set up as well. This is the terrain where this bike is really most at home. Rolling climbs, flatter stuff, flowy stuff. Man, I think like Tennessee, West Virginia, this would totally be my main hardtail there. That lightweight is so nice. Weight isn't everything, but it sure makes a difference. You can find a climb and shift the gear harder, not easier, and push it, and it's eager to go up in that gear. It is such a fast climber. We made it to Chuck Wagon. That was an absolute joy of a climb up Snake. This bike is so good. I'm not able to go as hard and as fast as I do on my Banshee or my middle child. 
that's okay. It's still fun in its own way. Hello. I'm not gonna lie. It's really nice having gears. Makes it a lot easier. I've really gotten comfortable with this bike as I've gotten to know it. Riding a lot. So on the aggressive, modern, and slack bikes, I'd be pushing it 100% speed and effort down here. And on this bike, I find myself at 85%. And I'm okay with that. I'm 100% effort on the ups, but the downs, I'm reeling it in a little because it's still not quite as planted as a enduro bike. Thanks, you guys. Just two of us. Have a good day. Super nice hikers today. I need to get my bell reinstalled. You're fine, you're fine. Thank you. Pretty interesting. People lying down in the trail. Oh, what a difference this wider rim and tire make, this aggressive front tire. Corners with so much more confidence. The plus tire still had even more confidence cornering on the downs, but not a ton. How you guys doing? Good. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, this bike's still fun. It's stupid how fun this is. I don't dare push it much faster. It's a little loose out here. Hello. Hi. This is why I love mountain biking. Look at where we are. This is gorgeous. These brakes are on the edge of being powerful enough. I think I just need bigger rotors. I really like the Stepcast 34. It's kind of a delicate fork. So you have to really baby it when you're working on it or transporting your bike. But man, it's perfect for a bike like this. Oh man, this thing just goes right up the climbs. So if this were my bike, I would definitely swap the brakes out for bigger rotors. Just with my weight, I weigh 180 pounds. These do a pretty good job on most trails, but I need more power than a 160 in the back. Oh, what a fun bike. Way to go, Spot Bravo. This is the most exciting bike I've ridden. It has that secret sauce and it just has so much character. If you can't tell, I absolutely love this bike. After riding this for a month and putting many, many, many miles on this thing, I wouldn't change a thing with the geometry. I would change a few things with the build. I think the cranks are too long. I think the rims are too narrow and the tires are way too low grip. So I would get 30 mil rims on it, run some aggressive two threes, and run some shorter cranks, 170s, maybe even 165s on it. One other issue I've had is the saddle. It feels great and it's light. I like the shape of it. It's comfortable, but my shorts get hung up on these wings on the back. I like the 60 mil stem. I think it fits the nature of the bike perfectly. So does the Fox Stepcast 34. I wouldn't want any more travel. The stack is nice and high when you run it like that. I think that's part of why it manuals so well. Man, this is a dream bike right here. Lots of room for a 160 dropper, two water bottles in the frame, super lightweight. The bike does feel delicate. I feel like a really hard crash would probably break it. It doesn't feel as solid as like the Yeti Arc 
or the Santa Cruz Chameleon. The carbon just feels a little bit thinner when you flick on it and stuff. I'm no materials expert. I'm just saying what it feels like. It may be stronger than the other ones. I don't know. That said, this is an absolutely fantastic bike. This is my favorite bike for blue and green trails, hands down. The Santa Cruz Chameleon, which I mention in every single review because that's such a special bike, it's a little more playful than this. It's more BMXy than this. But this thing is the bike, when you think where hardtails really excel, this is the bike you want. Too many bikes these days are coming in with 150, 160 forks, 63 degree head angles, and they're hardtails. And they suck at what hardtails are best at, which is flowy, zippy, fun acceleration and pumping things and speeding along in ways that full suspensions can't. And that's where this bike really shines. This is the perfect type of bike where hardtails are better than full suspensions. And this is the model that best exemplifies that. This is the bike out of all the bikes I've ever reviewed that I really don't want to send back. This is the bike that's gonna haunt me and two years from now, I'm still gonna say, I wish I still had that spot rocker in for review because that was so special. This could never be my only bike. It is too biased toward that trail and XC stuff. But I think for a lot of people who have one full suspension and one hardtail, this is the hardtail to get because it's zippy, it's light, it's so good at things that hardtails are good at. It's pretty much the quintessential ultimate hardtail experience for blues and greens. It's an incredible bike. It runs a little small, so if you're in between sizes, I'd probably size up. What else would I say? How would I buy it? Since this couldn't be my only bike, I wouldn't have budget for a five-star build like this, and especially not the six-star build. So I'd buy the four-star build, and I would buy it geared, but run it single speed. As much as I think the belt drive is cool, I don't feel like it's as idiot proof as the chain. You have to handle the belt a little bit special. Um, it still needs lube on it. You have to buy these real expensive pulleys when you change your gear ratio and new belts are like 95 bucks. So I would buy it like this. Then I'd only have a 32 up front instead of that 46 on the belt. That's a big downside to the belt drive. That 46 tooth, I smacked it on a few rocks and that damages the belt and I couldn't trust the belt at that point and that's another 95 bucks for another belt. So if you live in rocky terrain, it sounds dumb, but that big of a chain ring, you will hit it in Sedona. So I'd buy it like this, pull off the gears, stick the shifter and derailleur in a box for when I wanted it geared, and then just run it single speed like that. It's time to rate this bike. On flats, 10 out of 10. This thing accelerates and sprints like a rocket. On uphills, 10 out of 10. Even if it's a technical climb, it gets up it so well. On downhills, it depends on how you have it set up. With the stock tires and wheels, the 29, it's like a seven on the downhills. It's sketchy, unless it's real flowy and not real steep. With the plus tires, it loses some of that zippiness, but gains a ton of confidence and traction, and you can actually bomb some crazy stuff on this thing. With the wide 29ers, it's the best of both worlds. It doesn't have quite as much grip as the 27.5 plus wheels, but it rolls fast and it still kept that zippiness but had a lot more grip. Cornering, I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. This is a fantastic bike. And if the only gripes I can say about it are I would change the rims and shorten the cranks, that's saying something. Thank you Spot for sending me this. It's been super fun to test. I really, really, really don't want to give this back, but I have to. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.